Wow, I finally got a haircut then. Educational games, eh? Sometimes they were disguised so well as normal games that I had no idea they were meant to be educational. Seems bloody obvious nowadays, but there I was counting money as if it was fun or something. One educational game series that we had both at school and at home was Zoom Beanies. Oh. The memories. I think there were three games in total, but the one that I remember the best was definitely the first one. I actually streamed it live, both here and on Twitch. Pretty stressed out. Pretty stressed out, that's me. So feel free to give me a subscribe and a follow if you want to watch in the future. And while you're at it, you might as well give this video a like too. I also just made a Patreon, so feel free to head over there if you want to help support me. But enough of the standard YouTuber calls to action. Let's see if I have enough big brain energy to play the logical adventure of the Zoom Beanies. They don't make music like that anymore, I tell you. The logical adventure of the Zoom Beanies was developed by Turk and published by Broderbund in 1996 for the PC, later retitled as Zoom Beanies Logical Journey in a re-release by the learning company for modern computers. And the game begins by introducing us to these super cute little blue creatures called Zoom Beanies. The Zoom Beanies are apparently known for their incredible craftsmanship and their healthy bank accounts. Guess this game is pro-capitalism then? And living in peace, despite their obvious weird differences in appearance, when the bloats arrive, who promise to help the Zumbinis expand their business. The Zumbinis agree, and the bloats end up enslaving them and working them to the bone. Uh, not that they have any bones by the looks of it. There's no bones left! So the Zumbinis decide enough is enough and hatch an escape plan. And that's where you come in. Zumbinis is a kids educational game where 16 strong troops of Zumbinis try to brave it from their ship across a strange unknown land towards their new settlement, coming across the weird and wacky local population who put on a bunch of challenges for the Zumbinis to undertake before they can pass along. The Zumbinis have a bunch of different customization options with different hair, eyes, noses and feet to choose from where the differences in appearance play into the puzzles on the way. I just picked random because like as if I had the time to customize 16 past the sell by date Mr. Potato Heads covered in blue mold and away they go. The Zumbinis first encounter the Allergic Cliffs, a pair of maybe alive rock formations with two rickety old bridges held up by some old rotting poles. When a Zumbini crosses, they either make it safely to the other side, or the cliff face may have an allergic reaction and sneeze, blasting the Zumbini back to the start, where one of the cliffs is allergic to something, and through trial and error you can work out what that is to get the Zumbinis across safely. Next up, the Zumbinis have to pass through the Stone Cold Caves, where two pairs of stone guardians segregate the Zumbinis again by their physical appearance. Sorry, didn't realise this nightclub was exclusive. So it's pretty similar to the previous one, but with four paths instead of two. Stopping off for something to eat, the Zumbinis encounter what is probably the most loved part of this game, Pizza Pass, where a pizza troll refuses to let the Zumbinis pass unless they can cook him up a satisfactory pizza. Make me a pizza! This puzzle has some of the best lines in the whole whole game. Something on that I don't like. Something must go. More stuff. Honestly, I'm happy to just get this puzzle wrong again and again just to hear Arno speak. Yeah, yeah. It's not too difficult, where the toppings can be eliminated one by one before building the perfect pizza. Thank you, thank you. Have a pizza party! Reaching the first resting point, you get a good opportunity to save the game and click on some of the fun hidden interactive points in the background. The resting points will also hold any Zumbinis that didn't survive all the way so that they can rejoin in the adventure. We now get a choice of which direction to go. Let's go up. The Zumbinis have to cross the bayou on Captain Cajun's ferry boat, who says the Zumbinis can sit wherever they want. Well, sit wherever you want to, I don't really care. Meaning if the Zumbinis dare sit in the wrong order, they get yeeted out of their seats. Bye. <laughs> Zumbinis sitting next to each other have to have at least one identical attribute. I'm not sure on the maths of this if it's actually possible with any group of Zumbinis to get them all, but um, we managed to do it here, so off we go. We next come across the Titanic Tattooed Toads. God, try saying that quickly. Titanic Tattooed Toads. There are a bunch of giant toads with certain colours or patterns on their backs who follow the same pattern across a sea of crazy coloured lily pads. Each toad can carry two Zumbinis before buggering off, and this puzzle was like fine, but on Honestly, my eyes just could not cope with trying to identify the shapes and patterns of the lily 
lily pads. Oh geez, I've accidentally sent a Zumbini off on a path with no end. Barbara, I'm so sorry, but you're just going to be hopping around forever. Eventually, getting most of the gang across to safety, we come across Stone Rise, where a honeycombed field of electrified slabs sits waiting for the Zumbinis to stand on. Some of the slabs are chained, where the power will only pass along if the Zumbinis share a certain attribute. Careful not to drop the Zumbinis on the wrong plate! Ow! Okay, that wasn't too hard, but making it to the second campfire, we don't actually have enough Zumbinis to continue, so let's go and rescue some more. Taking the second bunch along the lower of the two paths, the Zumbinis encounter the Fleens, a local species with similarly crazy physical features to the Zumbinis. In this puzzle, the Fleen with matching characteristics to the Zumbini offered up in sacrifice will chase the Zumbini up the tree, where the aim is to lure the three Fleens sitting above the wasp nest away, causing the wasps to chase off the Fleens, but pissing off too many of the other Fleens will cause the branch to become overcrowded and a Zumbini can be lost. Moving on to Hotel Dimensia. Dimensia? Dimensia? I don't know. The Zumbinis must board up for the night before the hotel closes, where time passes with each wrong choice, because of course the welcoming hotel manager wants the Zumbinis to stay wherever they please, but good god not they, you idiot. This puzzle isn't too hard, with five rooms where Zumbinis in each room share a certain characteristic, like here where the rooms are segregated by nose colour. The next morning, Zumbinis reach the mud ball wall, where they can be propelled up the wall by firing mud balls at certain buttons on the wall. The mud balls can be customised by colour and printed shape, and through trial and error you can work out where each colour and shape corresponds to on the wall. Wasting too much mud causes the remaining Zumbinis to be left behind, but without too much trouble, we got the whole gang up. Meeting up with the original gang at the second campfire, the group heads off on the final stretch of their journey through the mountains of despair, where the lion's lair provides a path with 16 tiles and some hieroglyphics carved into the wall. The Zumbinis must be placed in order dependent on physical attribute, where here they are placed in order of nose colour as depicted. Placing too many Zumbinis incorrectly locks out the rest of the group, and those placed successfully move forward to the mirror machine. Here, a giant green crystal hangs with two crystal screens on either side. Placing a matching Zumbini and image will cause the crystal to rise, and the Zumbini sails along gracefully on the minecart. And 16 matches later, and the gang is set to move on to the last puzzle, Bubble Wonder Abyss. Who the heck designed this madness? Like, where did this glowing purple grid come from? The Zumbinis can pick out one of two buttons, where they are suspended into a giant bubble and sent forth on their journey with no way of stopping. They follow along a straight line until they pass over a square with directional arrows, sending them on a new course, until they either make it to the other side or get sucked into a swirling vortex of doom. <laughs> Sometimes the arrows switch direction with each Zumbini that pass over them, and some only apply to Zumbinis with a specific attribute, meaning that you have to work out the optimal way of sending each Zumbini across depending on their appearance. However, don't get overly cocky, as if two bubbled Zumbinis collide, then they both fall to their deaths. Oh, whoops! For the Zumbinis that did survive, however, they finally made it to their final destination. Zumbiniville! Finally they can relax, like, Jesus, I've put them through so much, I'm so sorry. But wait, Wait, you didn't think that was it, did you? Oh no, you see, there are actually three more difficulty levels for each level. Normally, they are unlocked when you successfully get 16 Zumbinis through a level three times, meaning that to fully complete the game, you need to get 625 Zumbinis through to Zumbiniville. Uh, I'm not being rude, but like, babe, you think I have time for that? Luckily, there is also a practice mode, where you can try out each level at each of the four difficulties. So, let's briefly go through them all again, shall we? <laughs> I had no idea what a change between the difficulties for both Allergic Cliffs and Stone Cold Caves, and honestly, I kind of just half guessed what they didn't want and eventually got everyone through. Pizza Pass brings in two more iconic pizza trolls, Willa and Shyla. I'm starving! I love them! With even more combinations, with ice cream added in just for fun. Willa, honestly, like, she's that bitch who's like, I'm sorry, I don't actually eat gluten, despite having no actual allergy or intolerance. There's something there I won't eat. Something's wrong! I'd appreciate more toppings. Is that all I get? And Shiloh could not be more high. It's still missing my favorite. Something's wrong. Uh-oh. The level was still pretty easy though, where again you can mostly just do the ingredients one at a time. Uh, excuse me? He wanted a pizza with no toppings? Is he insane? Have a pizza! Pie! One, two, 
The ferry boat gets increasingly more difficult seating arrangements, where Zumbinis have to be matched with multiple others at the same time. Pretty challenging, but it was kind of fun. The Titanic Toads get Bruno the Shape Swapper, a fairy whose wand can be used to switch lily pads to complete a track all the way across, and eventually some bloody annoying crabs come along and get in the way. Bloody move! Stone Rice gets increasingly more links between tiles, and took some thinking to work out. Fleens end up having more and more mismatched attributes, where the Zumbinis' hair might correspond to the Fleens' nose colour, which makes the challenge actually kind of hard, but still very doable, can just take so long. Hotel Dementia introduces both rows and columns, boarded up rooms, and then eventually five different tree trunks to segregate Zumbinis by. Again, a good challenge. Modball Wall had some properly messed up diagonal shifts in pattern locations that I struggle to figure out, and introduces a colour for the shape too, for an extra layer of difficulty. Haha, <laughs> thanks game! The Lion's Lair gives you increasingly less information, with multiple characteristics to sort by, until eventually it just gives you nothing to go off at all, and you have to work it out by yourself by trial and error. The mirror machine actually gets kinda cool, where extra screens are introduced, changing the appearance of the Zumbinis to the central crystal. Level 3 introduces shifting features that change depending on the previous screen's feature, and the fourth level has you sending off Zumbinis in pairs, meaning you have to work out what screen to add that will match both. And I really enjoyed mirror machine in the end, like, am I that sad? Finally, the bubble machine level just gets more and more insane, with extra buttons and attributes to match, and my brain was close to exploding by the end, like so much of having big brain energy. Overall though, it's a great game, which honestly, I don't know how children can be expected to work out, like some of the puzzles are damn hard. Like even me, a smarty smart pants if I say so myself, couldn't work it out. The art style is absolutely fantastic though, with some beautiful hand drawn backdrops. The music is brilliant. <laughs> Voice acting is also pretty amazing. Do be careful as you make your way up the path. I'll be right down. Make yourself cozy. Bye-bye. <laughs> Whoa, my, you've done exceptionally well. I think I'll be saying, Ugh, yuck, until the day I die. The narrator can be kind of annoying though, like shut up. Hip, hip, zoom. The sound effects are also fantastic, where the Zumbinis make great sounds as they skate along, and are constantly cheering when you successfully get them across. <laughs> They're so happy because we worked it out! And some of the other sounds are also great and really make the game pop. <laughs> Okay, now, I will briefly bring up the Zumbinis remake, which was released in 2015 by Turk, the original creators, as I think the original game kind of disappeared due to copyright matters. I have mixed feelings about the remake. Like, obviously it's great that kids can still play Zumbinis, as it teaches problem solving, recognising patterns and algorithm design in an approachable and fun way. The backgrounds are actually stunning, like these are beautiful, and the voice acting and music are all still there. However, the Zumbinis themselves look kind of weird and out of place. Place. Like, the people who designed the Zumbinis and the backgrounds and never talked and were like going for something completely different. I don't know, they kind of just look a bit lazy and cheap in my opinion. Also, one thing that was a big, big problem for me is just, just have a listen here. Where is the movement sound effects? The original had great sound effects, but here, just nothing. Like, it's so empty, the atmosphere is just dead. Such a shame, to be honest. However, the original Zumbinis remains a great game for teaching kids problem-solving skills, while containing enough magic to really make a lasting impact. I think this is a great game for parents to play with their kids, and one that they might also get some satisfaction out of, because god, <laughs> those puzzles, Jesus. But yeah, an absolutely great puzzle game, and one that I'm so glad I decided to revisit again. You know, I'm still thinking about that poor Zumbini I left bouncing all alone on that toad. Rest in peace, Barbara. Rest in peace. As always, thank you for watching. Feel free to follow me on my Twitter and Instagram. And I also have a Discord server, so feel free to join us there. And I'll catch you next time. Laters. Make me a pizza! Something on that I don't like! Doesn't like cheese? That's the basic pizza ingredient. Something's wrong! Okay, she hates everything. That's what he wanted.
I mean, I'm not judging, but where's what? Just uh, just order an ice cream. 